What's up everybody, Shrub Gator from ShrubGator.com here and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to repair some drip line. So as you can see we got a nice little fountain right here from some broken drip line. We're going to go ahead and check this out. This is my Rainmaster remote. I'm just going to turn off that station so we can get a clear look at uh, what, we're, what we're seeing over here. What's, what may have been causing that fountain. So as you can see is we've got some tears right here in the drip line. So that's why it was spraying out like that right now. Really easy to repair, nothing to worry about. I'm gonna show you guys how to do that right now. What you wanna do first is you wanna, you wanna make sure you have some drip fittings. So these ones right here, these are just straight through drip fittings. They have um, 90 degrees, they have uh, T's. You know, I'm just gonna get a couple of, these ones are called, um, I think they're just called drip couplings. Their couplings, they just bring uh, two ends together. There, there it is. This right here is my drip tube cutter. Um, this one, I'll leave a, a link to this exact one uh, from Amazon in, in the description below. This one, I'm not sure if you can get this exact one at like Home Depot stores. I think I got this one at an irrigation store. But um, if you go to like Home Depot or any kind of uh, utility store, they'll sell something similar. You can also use just like if you have, um, you know, like some some cutters that you use to cut branches or, or what, what are they called? Those uh, the tijeras, the snips. You can use a pair of snips, too. They work really well to cut drip line, too. So I just see where the where the edge of the cut is. I give myself a little bit of space and I cut it, cut it off from both ends. And then I got my new piece of drip line right here. This is just a, a small piece. You don't need nothing too big. All we're gonna do is we're gonna cut a piece to fit right into where where we um, where we cut out from the existing line. And then we're just gonna use our couplings to just put it back in. First thing you want to do is you want to you want to measure the gap. You can use a a ruler to do this or like a tape measure. You know, I just you know put the drip line right there. Just, take a quick look at it and kind of eyeball it it's really not that hard I'm cutting a little bit off the end here because as you can see that that black thing right there on the brown tube that's the emitter so when the sprinklers are on water is going to be coming out of there and um, that emitter when you're going to be if you're going to be attaching drip line to uh, to each other you don't want that that emitter to be too close to the edge because if that emitter is too close to the edge you're going to have you're not going to be able to put that fitting inside the drip line so as you can see right here um i cut a little bit off that other end and i'm cutting off from this end too but i want to keep that emitter towards the middle that way I'll, it'll fit inside the drip line um and then i'll have space on both ends to put my fittings without hitting the emitter So I got my fittings right here. I'm just gonna push them in from both ends. These things right here, they're really, the idea of how this goes is really simple, but it could be a little bit difficult uh, if you're not used to it. So this drip line right here, it could be pretty stiff. And what you gotta do is you gotta basically just, you know, shimmy the fitting into it. You gotta shove it in there, shimmy it. I couldn't really, it's kind of hard to hold the camera, but there's a better view right here. So as you can see, I just kind of shimmy my way into it. I try to hold the drip line from as close to the edge as possible because if you don't, that drip line is just going to start bending and you're going to, you know, be pulling your hair out. So I got it in from both ends and then now it's the exact same process to attach this little piece into the existing drip line. It's the same thing. I'm just going to shove it in on both ends just like that. And voila. I got one in on one more. There you go. Beautiful. Easy.
Uh, anybody that works on drip line, um, you want to make sure that you you got your staples. You got some staples with you, because drip line, when you're working on it, it tends to come off the ground, and uh, it could be a trip hazard for pedestrians. So you always want to make sure that you get your staple and you push that drip line back onto the ground. That way, nobody's tripping over it. If you know, maybe if a kid he kicks a ball into this planter or something, you know, no one's going to be you know, falling and hurting themselves. And then you test our work. And we got a drip line, we got water coming out the drip line. So it looks good. And then I noticed this, which this, when I first turned it on, this wasn't coming out because the water wasn't passing from the first break. And so since I fixed that break, I seen that this is cut clean off. And so it's completely cut through. You see this, you know, you see this a lot when you work on drip line. You know, this can happen from from all kinds of different things. It could be the gardeners when they're trimming the bushes, they could accidentally hit the drip line or it could be um, just a, a number of different things. Sometimes um, the drip line lays right under the dirt and uh, even roots, you know, even roots will attack it if it's sitting right on on top of the dirt. It's a really good idea to mulch the planter. That way the drip line is not just being hit by the sun all constantly because the sun will definitely um, dry out the, the drip line and damage it and, you know, shorten the life of the drip line. But if you got a good layer of mulch over it, then it'll be good. So as you can see, I turned everything back on and I got it running and it looks good. right here's a, a drip line air release valve i just wanted to show you guys that real quick if you didn't know what that was that if you have any air uh in the line after you've repaired it or done anything like that you want to make sure you take out that air um because if the air is in there when the water's in there you can uh, break your one of your emitters and so that's it for today, guys. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for checking it out. Uh, if you like my content, you want to see more irrigation videos, please uh, like and subscribe. Thank you.